Yeah. Uh, is the PPT visible? The slide show? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, the presentation today, as uh, Dr. Dinesh told you when uh, he was introducing, it is a soft skills based education. Okay. Uh, and then this picture here shows you that uh, there are certain uh, life skills here, 10 life skills. These are the skills which are being uh, listed by the World Health Organization. And these words, life skills and soft skills are interchangeably used. So as we go on, we will name, but in the beginning, I will just uh, name these 10 which are listed by the WHO. The first one is self-awareness, empathy, critical thinking, creative thinking, decision-making, problem solving, effective communication skills, interpersonal relationship, coping with stress and coping with emotions. Okay, these are the skills which uh, WHO and even the World Economic Forum all of them list and then say these are the skills which uh, we as educationists should train our students so that we will make them uh, ready for the future life. Now here I'm very specific when I say uh, making children uh, that education should prepare children for their future life. But what educationists today are thinking about when we are constructing our curriculum or when we are thinking of providing learning experiences okay. in school, we are concentrating only on making children job ready. Means we, even parents have certain aspirations. There as when you ask a parent, what is their aspiration for their child? The parent just say, thinks of what is the job the child has to take up when he grows up. Other than that, they do not have any plans for their children. They do not think of what quality of life they will be able to lead whether they will be really able to lead a happy life, whether they will be able to uh, adjust in the society and live with uh, the family members, maybe the neighbors. Okay, So these skills, we, these 10 skills are the skills which make children future ready for their life, Okay, not just for their job. Now, if we, I would like to just... Uh, this, I think most of us also will be uh, experiencing this daily in our life. Uh, I would like you to just visualize one situation where uh, when we are driving, okay, uh, there is a car in front of us and then no matter how much you try to overtake it, they are going very slowly and they're not leaving space to you to over overtake it all. Okay, so what would be our reaction? Just think of it. Maybe for some time, we will uh, uh, just indicate to them through a horn, asking them to leave us some space. But even then, they, they are not. Then uh, maybe we will start continuously honking at them. Even then, they do not leave the space. Then we will get a little irritated. Okay. Uh, this is common with all of us. But we will never think of what may be the situation of the person driving that car. Maybe... Uh, there is a technical error or maybe the person is still learning and not, but we are trying to put them into tension and then we ourselves are also going through that tension. Okay. So the first thing, our response will be impatience first. Then after we become impatient for a long time, even then they are not leaving a space, we get irritated, then we get frustrated, then we start showing anger. And then many a times, maybe when we reach a uh, level where maybe uh, we will it will also turn violent we have seen many of them uh, while overtaking they will just uh, turn back and shout at the other driver and then pass okay so these situations are becoming very common nowadays when you uh, it's it, this is just a situation but in many situations we are facing this in outside society today okay so here we are becoming slaves to our emotions, okay? So we are becoming so impatient that we are forgetting to reason out. We never try to reason out and see why this is happening. Okay? It's not only in this uh, situation where the car is not letting you to overtake, it is, it is happening in all our uh, other situations in life. Consider the family, consider the school situation, the relationships with our colleagues, relationship with our students, 
okay we are not valuing the interaction between each of us we are not valuing the uh, what do we say the skills or abilities of the other person we are not thinking of the situation of in which the other person is okay so these skills are to be brought about actually so because of all this we know anger is over ruling our judgment okay it is leading to unpalatable actions also this is where we say is uh, emotional hijacking which is non productive and non effective okay non productive even in our work non productive in uh, relationships also now i would like to present a little a few facts here now according to this association of chambers of commerce and industry of india only 20% of the 5 million students who graduate every year are getting employed in india just see only of the 5 million students only 20% are getting employment now the key reason here is because our curriculum and our training of these students have we have not kept up with the time it's not keeping up with the job market keeping up with the uh, whatever skills they require for the job market in the future now according to kagan in today's world team work skills are the employability skills it's not just the skills yes, which ma'am ma'am uh, are you changing the slide or we are seeing the title slide yeah has it changed no 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 now yes madam i saw them okay it's so visible now these are certain facts in 2015 it was recorded that 8934 students in india had committed suicide students of school going age okay uh the reasons for this suicide in school going children was failure in examination then it was parental stress failure in relationships there are certain uh, very meager reasons like loss of mobile phone or not giving access to mobile phone and not children not being not able to afford the latest version of the phones not just able to see their favorite tv show okay and there were children who have also given out reasons like their email inability to control their weight okay they are becoming so body conscious also so these were certain reasons which uh, were given by children who had uh, committed suicide okay they had given these reasons for committing suicide so where are we heading to where is our education giving uh, these children the skills which they require for their life if they are not able to even take this a small no cannot be taken by these children okay they are becoming psychologically so weak and how do we expect them to become the future uh, citizens who can build up a nation okay and then also uh, there is another fact which i would like to present that uh, Tamil Nadu had seen the highest recorded accident statistics in India, and this was in contrast to the fact the fact that it is uh, this state which had the best roads in India. So, in spite of that, why were so many accidents? The statistics had proved that most of them were because of road rash. It was the aggressive anger which led to speeding, racing, and brutal desire. Okay, so. when we are looking around 
we see how many uh, people who are uh, not you just uh, if we just compare our older generation and then our younger generation okay you just look at people of our old uh, elder generation if you just see them in any public place they normally look very calm okay and they are patient if there is somebody in front they just calmly wait in the queue but just compare our future generation the future younger generation you normally see the, uh, they are very impatient they are very angry they are moody they are stressed okay and also we just see that the social interaction among our elderly generation is better when or significantly better when compared to even our generation also even ours and then even in social gatherings if you just see you you attend a marriage the elderly generation just always look for people around and then talk with people but the younger generation if you just look at them even if they are in a big crowd they are always busy just with their mobile phones okay they do not want to interact with people at all okay uh, and then uh, you just speak about uh, uh, friends of the younger generation they would not have seen their friends at all they are just always on having friends on their facebook or on myspace okay so the generation also is becoming digital it is changing and then looking at the world these are the just the facts which i would like to present before i just look into the soft skills looking at the world happiness report okay the report says that finland is the happiest nation in the world uh, which is followed by uh, norway denmark iceland and switzerland and then in each asia israel is found to be the happiest one india is in 133rd position okay so if we think of success what is success then is success acquiring a fam uh, a house, building a big house and staying in it a success or do we define success by uh, saying that okay you have got a job and then uh, you are doing well in your job then that is success or you are living a happy life that is success okay so what is the parameter which we use to define success happiness may be defined as something which we are being passionate about passionate about our personal life passionate about our professional life okay so this being passionate about life and our professional life or is the one thing which we have to teach our students there's a famous quote by albert einstein okay where he defined success he defined success as love your work work your love okay two things one love your work this most of us do and then work your love what does it mean actually this quote we say is quite magical it means that we have to love our profession be passionate about it and also we have to love people around us and we have to also learn to express our love to those whom you or we love okay so this is the domain of soft skills where we are able to maintain relationship with others where we are able to express our uh, relationship with others okay and maintain it i would like to uh, uh, just ask each of you to self assess yourself there are certain questions here just answer in yes or no okay have you ever okay broken any thing maybe it may be a mobile or anything for that matter when you are angry yes ma'am yeah just uh, go on writing let us see how many yes and how many no's you will be getting so the first broken breaking a thing when you are angry then whether you have diverted your anger on any stranger any time yes or no yes ma'am then the third whether you have reacted to stress 
by withdrawing into a shell. I mean, somewhere in a stressful situation, instead of trying to cope up with it, have you just moved away from it? Okay. The fourth, have you ever freed yourself from running away from a situation? It means boldly you have faced or you have tried to run away from the situation. The fifth, have you ever let go of your ideology for your fear of failure or judgment? It means in some situation, because of the fear of failure or because of being judged, have you left your ideologies ever in life? Then, have you been biased towards someone because of their identity? Identity because of gender maybe, community maybe. Okay. So based on this, have you been biased any time? Have you experienced mood shifts leading to negative feelings and or inferiority complex any time? So experience of mood shifts. Have you become defensive any time in any situation? Do you try to prove that you are always right? Okay, many of uh, the times we sometimes we say we are right and then uh, we know that uh, we may not be right. But because we have already said, we, we will try to prove that we are always right, giving many other reasons and then giving facts and all that. Okay. Have we ever you done that? Have you hurt people close to you? Okay. Maybe because of jealousy. So just compare how many yes you have got here for these 10 questions. If majority of the answers are affirmative, okay. If it is affirmative, then there is a you need to develop these soft skills okay so it's time to let go of the emotional baggage rectify and try to become progressive individuals okay now uh, in today's present competitive world we know that individual is required to be skillful yes it's not just enough if we have uh, knowledge of some content which we are doing in schools today. We are just, um, uh, what do we say, pouring in the knowledge into the brains of children. We are not developing children who are skillful in work. Okay, So they need to carve out these skills by practicing them every day. It's not just enough if you say these are the things you have to do and this is the way we have to do. These skills have to be developed. Okay, and then if skills have to be developed, it needs to be practiced. And this takes a long time if they have to build a profitable professional career. There is a recent report by OECD, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Mm -hmm. Under this report called the Skills for Social Progress, they have stressed the need to develop a whole child. Okay, a whole child with a balanced set of cognitive, social, and emotional skills so that they will be able to better face the challenges of the 21st century. <coughs> we have also heard of this phrase that skills beget skills. Okay? So early intervention in social and emotional skills can play a very important role in uh, raising the skills and also uh, reducing the disparities in the educational and the labor market and the social disparities. The aim of the present education, it's not only just cognitive development or uh, just building the character and creating holistic individuals. So these holistic individuals should be better equipped with the 21st century skills. So knowledge is not a deep-seated treasure, 
and education should help in the manifestation as the perfection which is already existing in individual we know this uh, our definition we have all been explaining and this definition is uh, given by Swami Vivekananda who says that there is already the divine perfection which is already existing in the individual and education it should has just bring out this uh, perfection which is already existing in the individual. So it is the all the aspects of curriculum and the pedagogy which has to be reoriented and revamped to attain these critical goals. So there are certain specific set of skills and values across domains which will be identified for integration and incorporation at each state of learning from preschool to higher education. This is uh, according to uh, our NEP 2020. So NEP 2020 is uh, trying to concentrate on uh, development of specific set of skills. Okay, Skills which will be identified uh, specifically for every level of education from preschool to higher education. Now we know uh, the nature of jobs have been uh, continuously changing at a very fast pace. The World Economic Forum in its report, the future of jobs, employment, skills and workforce strategy for the fourth industrial revolution. Now. Uh, we are uh, under the fourth industrial revolution. And in this report, the World Economic Forum states that the current technological trends are bringing about an unprecedented rate of change in the core curriculum content of many academic fields. Nearly 50% of the subject knowledge acquired during the, the uh, this is quite uh, uh, shocking to say actually, that 50% of subject knowledge acquired in the first year of the four year technical degree courses, they are saying are outdated by the time the students graduate out. It means just think the child is, uh, the student is in the first year of his undergraduation. And by the time he ends it, 50% of the knowledge which he has acquired is becoming outdated. The knowledge and the technical skills they require is changing at a very fast pace. So a large part of the existing knowledge of the current workforce will be outdated in a very few years. For that matter, if you just think of whatever we have learned, and then uh, if we just stop and then stop updating, our knowledge also will be outdated. But our times, at least we could have this knowledge and then with the same skills we could continue in our profession for a long time but now it is not so every two to three years the knowledge especially the technical field the knowledge is becoming outdated so focusing on the core set of uh, there are 35 work relevant skills and abilities that are widely used across all industry sectors and job families okay so by 2020, more than a third of the desired core skills or set of most topic occupation will be comprised of skills that are not yet considered crucial to job today. So today we may think that it is not that particular skill is not crucial for a job, but by the end of 2020, they had said World Economic Forum, now we are already in 2022, they had said that these skills will become outdated. Overall, it is the social skills which this World Education Forum says need to be developed in uh, children. Social skills like persuasion, emotional intelligence, and also skills of teaching the others. These will be in higher demand in industry than the technical skills like programming or anything, whatever technical skills which our education was concentrating on till now. Then content skills, cognitive abilities, and process skills. These will be a growing part of the core skill requirement for any industry or any service sector for that matter in the future. Well, the World Economic Forum has given these uh, core work-related skills. They have categorized them into three. 
one is the ability the second is the basic skills and the third is the cross functional skills under these they again give a list of all the 35 core skills which uh, the world economic forum lists out under the abilities they are categorizing the abilities into two cognitive abilities and physical abilities under cognitive abilities earlier when we say cognitive ability we were just thinking of um, understanding comprehension application and all that now under cognitive abilities they say it is cognitive flexibility what do we mean by cognitive flexibility cognitive flexibility is information and knowledge is uh, changing at a very fast pace it is accumulating at a very fast pace so cognitive flexibility is flexibility for us to um, learn quickly and then flexibility in making changes in the knowledge which we have so cognitive flexibility creativity logical reasoning problem sensitivity it is sensing the problem which is the first requirement for problem solving so sensing the problem itself is a cognitive ability mathematical reasoning and visualization <clears throat> so these are the cognitive abilities they have stressed and also on this they have also uh, mentioned physical ability abilities like the physical strength and also the manual dex dexterity and precision which need to be developed in children through our education now coming to the basic skills there are again two categorization which the world education forum categorizes one is the content skill the other is the process skills the content skills come with active learning okay it's not just learning it is active learning that is learning to learn then we have oral expression then reading comprehension it's not for somebody else to teach us but instead the students can comprehend their on their own okay so reading comprehension and writing expression many a times we have seen that uh, graduates today are good in their jobs their technical skills are good but they do not know how to express simple things also so writing expression and also ict literacy is considered to be a basic content skill then coming to the process skills which the world education forum lists out it is active listening then critical thinking and the third process skills here quite important is monitoring the self and the others or self regulating oneself and also the others so these are the basic skills which they list out then coming to uh, this uh, cross functional skills they list out social skills what are these social skills social skills like coordinating with others emotional intelligence negotiating learning to how to negotiate or put across our views then persuasion service orientation then training and teaching the others so these are the social skills which they list out then they come to the system skills under these cross functional skills system skills are judgment and decision making skills and also system analysis skills the third category under these cross functional skills is the complex problem solving skills earlier under the cognitive abilities they listed problem sensing sensing here they are listing for complex problem solving skill here problem solving can be viewed as a process which the, uh, we have to uh, mentally go through so this is uh, in different steps so complex problem solving skills need to be developed then we have the resource management skills it's not just having the resources for our use we should know how to manage the resources which are there so they also list out the skills of managing the resources so management of financial resources management of material resources management of people and also time management 
So these are the resources which we should be able to manage. Then we have the technical skills. Uh, this uh, most of our curriculum of any uh, undergraduate degree or any school for their vocational programs for that matter, develop these technical skills. Now, looking at all this, they could be broadly brought into this term called the soft skill. So the soft skill we know contributes to development of an enigmatic personality of any individual. This is a very popular term used nowadays. And then uh, it covers the person's transversal competences like social aptitude, the communication ability, the friendliness, and the capability of working in a team together with the team and then taking the team along then the leadership qualities okay leadership is not showing bossism where making people do but it is getting involved with the people and then um, uh, taking people along with them and uh, other personality traits that characterize the relationship between people these soft skills are traditionally always com considered complementary to hard skills. These hard skills, which are technical requirements of a job to perform certain type of task or activity. <coughs> soft skills also promote mental well-being and competence in young people because they will make them ready to face the realities of the life. Now, this term soft skill actually was first coined by the U.S. Army in 1960s, as early as the 1960s. It recognized that uh, soft skills make a very big difference when it came to the outcome of any military, military exercise. Now, according to this term used by the military, it referred to any skill for that matter, which does not involve any use of any machinery. Instead, it dealt with soft skills which required the military to uh, skills which were necessary to lead groups skills which were necessary to motivate soldiers skills which were necessary to win the wars yes this is how the term soft skill uh, was coined by the u.s military at that time now it is popularly said that uh, technical skills take you to the doorstep of the job, but soft skills keep you at the job, okay? Now, according to a research conducted by Harvard University, 85% of the job success comes from well-developed people skills and soft skills, and it is only 15% of the job success which comes from technical skills and knowledge, which we consider as the hard skills. So we see once you are into the job, it is only 15% of the uh, technical skills which will decide the success in job. It is 85% of soft skill which will determine the success. Okay, And there are different nomenclatures which are used uh, instead of soft skills. Some call them human skills, key skills, people skills, personal skills. Okay? These are other words which are also critical skills other words used for the term soft skills. So soft skill is an umbrella term which covers all the essential competencies which are directly connected to one specific task. So the soft skills are considered a deliberate element in any organization for human resource management and the professional growth of individuals. Now, uh, there are certain definitions which I will not go up to now. Uh, so these life skills are needed to deal effectively with the challenges in everyday life. They need to operate effectively in society in an active and constructive way. There are different names given to soft skills. The WHO in 1993 called it as life skills. In 98, it was called transversal skills. 
the uh, European uh, tuning, pro famous uh, tuning project called it for the generic competencies in 2000. Then the OECD called it the key competencies. key competencies for lifelong learning, and some call it the 21st century skills, and some call it the transferable skills. Then it is also called as the future work skills. Okay. The manpower group calls it the soft skills for talent. The OECD calls it skills for social progress. Okay, All these terms are uh, uh, very synonymously used with the word soft skills. There's a taxonomy given for soft skills. So there's a categorization of the soft skills. They are basically categorized into three, personal soft skills, social soft skills, and methodological soft skills. The first one, personal soft skills, these are the abilities or skills that will relate to the individual alone. Okay, These are the skills which uh, are related to the competency which an individual uh, alone has to possess, means which he uh, can maintain what we call the in, in, inter, intrapersonal relationship because we ourselves, within ourselves, we have to uh, maintain our own relationship. So these are the abilities that relate to the individual alone. Next category is the social soft skills which are required to relate to another person, that is the interpersonal uh, relationships. Then we have the methodological soft skills, which are the techniques or procedures which are required to solve a problem or a situation or a, uh, finding answer to a question, finding, okay, uh, undergoing all this uh, process of inquiry and then information seeking, uh, such skills. So these are the three categories under the taxonomy of soft skills, personal, social, and methodological. Now coming to the personal uh, category, there are some skills which are listed out. The first one among it is the learning skills. Now we know, we have heard of this uh, teacherless education actually, or teacherless learning, where uh, we can learn or students can learn on their own. So it is the learning skills. And then uh, it is the next one listed out here under the personal category taxonomy is commitment. Then we have professional ethics, then tolerance to stress, self-awareness, <coughs> life balance, cultural adaptability. So these are the ones which are listed under the category of the uh, personal soft skills. Then we have the social soft skills. Under this category, we have skills like communication skills, customer or user orientation skills. We have teamwork skills, leadership skills, negotiation skills, conflict management skills, and then contact over a network. These are the social uh, category of skills. Next, we have the third category under the taxonomy, which is called the methodological soft skills, which is uh, content reliant. Under this, we have the creativity or the innovation skills, decision-making skills, analysis skills, Management skills, management here, we told about the resource management. We have resources like the uh, uh, financial resources, people resources, time is a resource. So management of all this is a management skill. Then we have adaptability to changes. Change, when we take especially the digital technology, we know changes are very fast. Now, so uh, children should be very adaptable to the changes and then they should accommodate themselves to the change. So then continuous improvement and also resource and information management. <laughs> so these are the skills which are listed out under the uh, methodological uh, soft skills. 
Okay, so this is a taxonomy of soft skills where they are categorized. All the skills, soft skills are categorized into three uh, basic categories: personal, social, and methodological. Now, this is the World Health Organization's ten core life skills: self-awareness, empathy, <laughs> critical thinking, creative thinking, decision making. Problem solving, effective communication skills, then interpersonal relationship skills, coping with stress, and coping with emotions. Emotion. These are the ten core life skills which are listed out by the World Health Organization. Okay. These are interconnected to one another. We cannot say that one is independent of the other. because when you say self awareness self awareness is uh, awareness about or knowledge about one's own strengths and one's own weaknesses okay and then uh, being aware of one's own capabilities aware of one's own limitations but the self awareness becomes also a part of emotional intelligence also okay and then uh, uh, self awareness is something where they understand their own emotions understand others emotions when we come to the next one it is empathy empathy also is empathy we all know is uh, trying to put ourselves in the place of another person and trying to understand their emotions trying to understand their behavior uh, and then also feel what we would do if we were in their situation but empathy is not possible without self awareness only when we know to understand our own emotions we will be able to understand others emotions also so here one skill is dependent on the other if we take effective communication effective communication is possible only when we understand the emotions of others only when we are able to empathize with others okay uh, even uh, coping with stress or coping with emotions all this is possible only if we are self aware if we are having empathy okay and then if we are able to think critically if we are able to solve problems only then we can be able to have good interpersonal relationship also so all these 10 core life skills that world health organization says is not independent of one another but instead they are interconnected and then many abilities of uh, one skill overlap with the other skill so our education now at present should be life skill based education or soft skill based education <coughs> so this life skill based education aims to help children to reach the full personal potential and to prepare them for the challenges of everyday life this form of education focuses on cultivating the personal life skills okay so these i we discussed about uh, the uh, three taxonomy of uh, skills so uh, this life skill based education initially at school level concentrates on these personal skills and then uh, these are the uh, skills which are concentrated when it comes to school education with which is life skill based education it is critical thinking skill decision making communication interpersonal self awareness creativity empathy and problem solving stress management and time management skills now looking at the history of the life skill based i think i will not go into this history part what are the objectives of these uh, life skills education one thing the objective of this life skill education is to teach children to be able to clearly state their thoughts feelings and ideas to others many a times we see that uh, uh, children themselves say that they are not sometimes they say you might have seen we ourselves feel sometimes that Uh, we would be feeling worried or something like that, but we will not be able to express it to others, and then we will not be able to tell why we are worried. Okay, so 
life skill based education has the first objective of uh, building this ability in children or skill in children to clearly state their thought process to clearly state what is the feeling identify and then communicate to others what they are feeling and also communicate their ideas to others the other next objective of life skill based education is to teach children to settle this disagreement in ways that are not hurtful we know that, uh, especially nowadays people do not agree with one another's opinion okay so that is where tension starts between people so this life skill based education concentrates on teaching children to settle the disagreements and how to settle this in ways which are not hurtful to either themselves or to the others we under this life skill based education we teach them to choose activities that will promote the physical health of and also the well being of the individual the other objective is to teach them to manage stress positively because we know under this um, comp in this competitive world it is quite a stressful life even for the students but uh, compared to i think our generation or the previous generation our student life was not so so stressful or competitive as today's children's lives are okay so managing this stress positively is to be taught to these children and then we have to teach them to do what is right for themselves when they are in a group okay though in a group they should know what is right for them then we also under this life skill based education try to teach them to have control over their personal goals and also their future so we should have the child should have control over their future and then they should clearly know what their goals are in keeping their limitations we knew being self aware they should know how to achieve their goals because it is not uh, just enough if they set high goals many a times uh, inferiority complexes start because they will not be able to achieve their goals because they would have set very high goals which are beyond their limitations so being self aware and then uh, knowing their limitations and knowing their abilities they should be able to set the goal for their future so that they will be able to have control over it they are taught here yeah. to be comfortable with who they are okay means uh, having self confidence being uh, having a high self esteem of themselves having a positive self concept of themselves okay so being comfortable with who they are instead of saying that i should have been that i should have looked like that okay however they are we uh, under this uh, skill based life skill based education we teach them that you know, as they are they are good okay so learning to be comfortable with who they are okay so accept where they are in their personal growth so accept themselves in whatever stage they are in their growth and then under the skill based uh, education life skill based education the other objective is to help them to choose how to express themselves cut maadu tirga maadu then to recognize their strengths not to be afraid to challenge themselves so today they have achieved something so the next day is to challenge their whatever they have achieved today not challenge achievement of others it is challenging their own achievement means going on improving with my performance today my performance is something then tomorrow i will have to compare my performance of yesterday's and try to achieve something more so uh, my uh, achievements of tomorrow should be determined on what <coughs> i am achieving day after day okay not comparing it with 
somebody else's achievement so recognizing my strengths and then challenging myself for the future then identifying and also to stay true to my values okay a value system of an individual is very important so staying true to my values okay so value conflicts should not be there within the individual so this is what we say um, uh, dissonance okay so if there is dissonance in the long term in life then it could lead to frustration and all that so identifying and staying true to uh, the child's own values is also being taught under this life skill based education so there are benefits of life skill education to uh, everyday life if this life skill education is given we know then uh, they will find new ways of thinking and problem solving okay so self managing working as a part of a team they will be able to manage people and time and then uh, agility and adaptability in different roles and also flexible in different working environments if life skill based education is given to children then uh, the potential to lead by influence means they will be future leaders then uh, considering at the international level if life skill education is given it will also benefit the world because there will be international cooperation then um, every individual will know how to respect diversity it will allow creativity and innovation and also it will help in a very uh, building a tolerant euphoric society and then if we under this life skill based education since we will be, we will be teaching them this negotiation skills and also the ability to network and empathize with uh, others so it will be able to build resolutions rather than resentments okay so uh, these are the objectives and uh, the benefits of uh, life skill based education to the society uh, and also for the individuals at the personal level i think uh, with this it is time and i will uh, stop here any uh, discussions or any questions if anybody has further actually i had just uh, uh, gone with each of the skill uh, for example if we take critical thinking then what is critical thinking okay there were some uh, um self assessment of what we would be doing if we are thinking critically in different situations so that is how uh, it was i think uh, sometime other if we are able to get in any other next session we will just go through all these different skills i think uh, to end up i will uh, just uh, present one last slide we were uh, speaking about uh, identifying our own emotion and others emotion right so we you know even if anybody doesn't speak out uh, looking at their uh, facial expressions and then um, the position of the eyebrow the positioning of the lips the positioning of the cheeks we will be able to understand what is the emotion they are going through okay so that is how we are uh, uh, nowadays especially with the use of emojis also we are trying to communicate so here there is one small this thing let me present this could you just recognize uh, what is the emotion being First displayed happiness happiness sorry 
The first one is happiness. The second one, surprise. Surprise, surprised with happiness. Okay, there are mixed emotions, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Though both of them are happy, don't you think the level of happiness is different? Yes, ma'am. And one has innocence also in that happiness. Okay. And if you go to the next one, can you see the last picture? Second picture is confusion. Uh, uh, is it confusion? The last picture of the man. Angry. Angry, yeah. He is in a state of confusion. Thoughtfulness. Okay, thoughtfulness is okay. Uh, what type of thoughtfulness? Worried about something. I mean, introspecting. <laughs> introspecting. Template. Look at the eye positioning of both the eyes. A little worried. They are not symmetric, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One is maybe, a little more Maybe close. doubtful with uh, something. Okay. Don't you think he's planning a conspiracy like? <laughs> okay. Maybe. And the facial expression could be very contextual. Like these images are of Western nature. Maybe in the next mm. way, conspiring something is different. <laughs> So, no, this uh, 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 there is a study, a research study, yeah, uh, yeah, which uh, yeah. says that uh, uh, this is uh, facial expressions, especially that you will listen. Uh, uh, wherever you go, all over the world, especially the facial expressions, uh, they are uh, very much similar. If you are worried or the positioning of the eyebrow, the eye, uh, the lip, okay, and uh, the positioning of the neck from the uh, body and uh, the hand position gestures, all of them are similar irrespective of maybe uh, the uh, movement is a little less in some cultures and then in some cultures it is a little more. But uh, irrespective of the culture and the uh, country, these Absolutely. facial expressions are seen to be a uniform when it comes to expression of the emotions. Then species specific, no madam. For all the human beings, I think the expressions will be the same, irrespective yeah, yeah. of the features. Features. Yeah. Uh, there is uh, another picture here. If you just see these two pictures, Okay, this is an animated one actually. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Though uh, it is the same, huh? hand position is the same and everything, but do you see the difference in the emotion here in both these pictures? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, this one is of fear. fear, fear. This Talking one also. is of overjoy. Overjoy. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, both have their mouths wide open, both have their hand positioned, okay, but and even the eyebrows are lifted, but there is change only in the eye. See the eyeball, the eyeball says that she is overjoyed and this is worried or uh, very fearful, okay. So this is how. Ma'am, uh, one point here. To a larger extent, as you said, the facial expression could uh, must be revealing what exactly the person is undergoing. It's kind of an overt expression. But many times we think uh, you know, the person is happy and their facial expression and the behavior is something which indicates that they are happy. However, we say that they are suicide and we get shocked. Then how it's possible? So many times the overt facial expression need not really reflect what exactly the person is going through. So anybody judging, to some extent for a research purpose, I agree. And even the uh, school children, probably if you are very closely associated with, you may be able to uh, derive certain understanding through the facial expression as well. But sometimes, uh, don't you think that it may 
uh, it may lead us in a different way. So probably other triangulating methods of understanding and examining the person's behavior and emotions is much required than only looking at a facial expression of people. Uh, yeah, I don't say that uh, only looking at the facial expression of the people, we can uh, judge the whole person. Okay, But it has a major part. And then uh, you are communicating with somebody and then... Uh, uh, either even in school or in your uh, workplace, every time we can't go with uh, uh, tools and then, uh, what do you say, administer the, uh, the tools and then uh, assess their uh, emotional state and all that. When you're communicating with somebody, it is uh, the facial expression, the body language, which we should be able to instantly study and communicate. Okay. Or when we are maintaining some uh, human relationships in our workplace and all that, communicating with each other, it is these uh, being aware of somebody's emotion is very much important. Every time we cannot, uh, no, as you said, maybe when uh, somebody is undergoing for counseling and all that, and somebody is undergoing, as you said, uh, some uh, drastic uh, change in life or uh, is under some stress or tension and all that, maybe then at that time we would require, when we go into deep counseling and all that, we may require to administer some tools and then rightly assess. But for communication purpose, I think uh, uh, these facial expressions and body language and assessment of that, immediate assessment of that is an ability which is uh, uh, required for all of us. I agree to a larger extent because uh, for an instantaneous assessment, probably that helps us. But many times, even the example that you gave at the beginning of the session about the uh, car, or, you know, we are not able to drive and overtake them and we are impassionate. Probably we need to understand these circumstances also in a context only. One instance, maybe I'm impassionate because of my own context and my own other preoccupied things, doesn't mean that, you know, I'm undergoing a kind of, a, you know, the so-called, because we say that everything to be perfect in the sense, you can be angry as well. All the emotions I think we need to equally respect the emotion as well. When you say angry or sad, we need not categorize it as something, you know, it's something very personal to me that categorize them as the person is very angry. Sometimes if a person reacts to a situation in an angry way, may lead to a kind of a better outcome as well. I understand that we need not hurt others when we are angry and other things. Apart from even love, we consider it as a very positive emotion. But overloving a person also may be you know, equally dangerous. It's not that love has to be considered as positive and angry has to be considered as negative and we should make young generations from this. It's fine. And the generation, generational gap that you talk about, I agree. But however, our children, the context is entirely different from the context of the you know, older generation or our own generation as well. So we may have to be a little more um, proactive and kind of, you know, we need to sense their context and try to understand and make them aware of themselves, as you said, and then managing whichever emotion it is, rather than categorizing that anger or um, confusion is something which has to be taken care and the other positive elements to be taken a little lightly. Probably that managing the skills as the soft skills talked about, maybe that is the need of the R, I feel. Yeah, truly, uh, yeah, 100% right. Uh, I don't say that uh, uh, these are negative emotions and then uh, uh, you, a person should never get angry. Uh, that, that is also not correct, actually. A situation where you have to get angry, then uh, you, uh, the child should know that he has to uh, express his anger also. But this is what is emotional maturity or uh, emotional intelligence where he should know how much of anger and uh, uh, with whom, in what situation, how much he, he should be able to express or exhibit. Okay. Uh, I think that part is what uh, we in our education should, uh, if our education is this uh, life skill based education, should concentrate on. Okay. Okay, any other questions? No,
it uh, just to try to introduce uh, this uh, uh, soft skill based education uh, where uh, we will be uh, this education would concentrate on those uh, uh, 10 core skills which uh, the world health organization has uh, listed out and also the world economic forum which has given these uh, taxonomy of these skills and uh, there are different strategies activities which uh, can be planned in order to develop these uh, skills in children. Okay. Yeah, if there are uh, no discussions, we, uh, shall we end? Madam, uh, I wanted to offer my vote of thanks. Uh, I'm very happy to convey that your presentation was very effective and informative. And um, I thank Dr. G. Sheila, Associate Professor of DOS in Education, Manskangotri Mysore, for her wonderful presentation of soft skills in education. And I'm proud to admit that I'm her student. I have gained a great deal of uh, knowledge and experience while doing my doctoral studies. And I thank all the authorities of HRDC for organizing such wonderful lecture. And I thank Dr. Praveena and Mr. Manjuna for organizing such good presentations. And I thank Sheila Madam and all the authorities on personal behalf and also on behalf of my co-participants and on behalf of HRDC. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Leela. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam. Yeah. Thank Bye, you, all of you. Thank you very much, Madam. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam.